guys, welcome to the second part of my Starch Solution Coffee Talk series. In the first part, I spoke about the fact why you can't eat as many carbs as you want and lose weight, or not gaining weight. Because the references Dr. McDougall used in his book didn't really support his claims. So the sources he cited said something completely different than he said in his book. Okay, I think we went through through all the supporting references and we found out that actually I think almost none of them really supports McDougall's statement. Now I would like to address some general claims and fallacies I found in the book. First of all, Dr. McDougall says we need to eat starch because that's the food we thrive on, because it is written in our DNA. Dr. McDougall says that we are born to eat starch because we have more genes for starch digesting enzymes than the chimps do. And yes, it is true, we aren't chimps. But actually, some people aren't too different from chimps. I don't mean it in a negative sense. Some people have slightly more of these genes than a chimp. And for these people, eating a high carb, starch based diet is associated with eightfold higher risk to become obese. So, my starch solution fans out there, have you done genetic testing before you started your starch based diet? Have you tested your genes to see if you thrive on starch or if you become obese? No? Maybe you should do this. To understand the entire starch gene saying, it is important to know that our ancestors weren't just built as the ready-made humans who could digest starch. No, there is something that is called evolution and our ancestors evolved. Depending on where our ancestors lived, they had to adapt to environmental conditions, which means that they needed to increase their fitness, their chances to survive. How can you increase your chance to survive? Well, by being able to eat more food that is out there. So if your ancestors lived somewhere in a region where there were lots and lots of starches, then they could duplicate or like make multiple copies of a gene that encodes the enzymes that can digest starch so they can use it for energy. You can imagine DNA like a building plan. It's like a plan to build a machine. In this case, the machine is an enzyme that can digest starch so you can get energy from it. And if you have more of the starch processing machines, you can, get, you can eat more starch and get more energy from it. And how can you increase the number of these machines? Well, if you make more plants, so there are more workers who can build machines according to these plants. And that is exactly the same thing with DNA. If you duplicate your DNA, so make multiple copies, then more enzymes that are responsible for starch digestion can be expressed or produced, and then you can benefit more from eating starch. But not all humans, not all ancient humans, lived in the areas where starches were abundant. For this reason, some people have more of these genes encoding the starch digesting enzymes, and some people have a fewer. And the people who have fewer of these genes have a higher risk to become obese on a starch based diet. Another claim starch was necessary to develop larger brains. Well, actually, the thing Dr. McDougall doesn't say it wasn't just starch and thermal processing of starch, but also meat. It's not like I want to advertise eating meat here in this video because I'm a vegan. It's just I would use the same argument for the starch issue as I use for people who tell me you have to eat meat because our ancestors ate meat to develop larger brains. Thank you for your concern about my brain health. But actually, I already have a pretty large brain and it functions pretty well. And now, in the modern society, I don't need to rely on meat or on starch to get enough calories in to support my brain function. Now, in the modern world, there are so many different food sources available. 
Just because my ancestors ate something, it doesn't mean that I need to eat it. I also don't go and live in a cave, or should I? Another claim Dr. McDougall makes is that Asian populations aren't obese. Only if they stop eating starch and start eating uh, other foods, then they become obese. Well, the issue isn't that simple. The first thing is, if they stop eating starch, this means they get more wealthy and they start eating more food, which means their energy intake increases. Another thing, with increasing wealth and increasing education status, the physical activity decreases. And this research study showed people in Asia who had a car, had fewer children, didn't cycle anymore, and so on, had a higher decline in physical activity. And what we can learn from it is, with increasing wealth, people start eating more and moving less. That's why they become obese. It's not just because they stop eating rice. Low-carb diets, also known as keto diets, cause illness. Well, to be honest, keto diets are actually a great tool in the hands of physicians to heal several illnesses. That is something Dr. McDougall didn't mention in his book. Protein is toxic. I heard this so, so many times. Actually, I wrote a blog post on this topic. I will link it down below so you can check it out. But for now, a short summary. You don't lose calcium from your bones if you eat a lot of protein. Dr. McDougall should update his references because more recent research showed that if people eat more uh, protein, they also absorb more calcium. That's why they excrete more calcium in urine, which means the protein balance stays the same in their bodies. Another thing is protein is bad for kidneys. No, it isn't. It is bad for kidneys only for people who have kidney diseases, but not for healthy people. The research studies that suggested that protein is bad for kidneys were either performed on deceased people or on animals. And there's a parameter that is measured. It's called GFR. And if GFR increases, researchers suggested that it is bad for kidneys. But the thing is, an increase in GFR is just an adaptation to new environmental conditions, like increased protein intake. Actually, GFR also increases in pregnant women, but pregnancy isn't associated with the risk for kidney disease. A recent study on bodybuilders who consumed a very, very high protein diet showed that consuming a high protein diet is not associated with decline in kidney health. In contrast, if you want to grow muscle and eat mostly starch as your main food sources, you would need to eat so, so much to get all the amino acids or like all the protein and you need. Just if you think about the leucine threshold, leucine is an amino acid that sets a signal for our muscles to grow and you need to have a certain content in a meal so that your muscle realize, okay, we need to grow now. And this would mean you would need to eat about 500 to 600 grams cooked rice at each meal, which is a lot. To be a healthy person, even as a sedentary person, not necessarily a strength athlete, you need to get enough amino acids in. And if you look at the limiting amino acids and just the requirements for a normal person, a 70 kilogram person would need to consume 3.6 kilograms cooked rice or 1.75 kilograms of bread to get all the amino acids in. Actually, it would be easier to combine grains and legumes, for example, to have rice and tofu. But Dr. McDougall is actually against soy products. But I will address the soy products myth in a different video. Another thing you shouldn't forget that lots of data that is written for sedentary individuals is based on RDA. So the recommended daily allowance. What many people don't know, the recommended daily allowance is not the optimal intake a person should have. No, that is a minimum intake at which 97% of the population isn't deficient. So that's the intake at which only 3% of the population become deficient. 
it's not the optimal intake. Fat is toxic because it causes all kinds of civilization diseases like heart diseases, diabetes and so on and so on. But actually diets high in fat were associated with improvements for diabetes type 2 patients or pre-diabetic patients and also for being good against heart diseases. Another saying why fat is so important, it is important for hormonal productions, so men on a low fat diet have shown a decline in testosterone levels. Another saying is fat is important for the absorption of fat soluble vitamins, so you don't get vitamin deficient. Also fatty acids are an important component of biological membranes, basically our cell walls, that's why fat is really important. Let's go on and start detoxing with starch. Well, there's actually very little evidence that detox diets are useful or efficient. And actually some researchers that wrote a critical review on the entire detoxing concluded that maybe it is more psychological issue why people want to detox. However, to be fair, I need to mention that there are few cases where detoxing is beneficial for example, if you are an alcoholic or drug addict, then maybe you should really think about joining Dr. McDougall's 10-day program so he can teach you how to heal yourself with starch. It costs only $6,000, so maybe think about it. Spontaneous healing. Actually, I thought it is Jesus' task, but it seems like Dr. McDougall can do it as well. There are a few case reports in his book from people who heal their heart diseases or arthritis with starch. But then I was thinking, what about real research? Has Dr. McDougall performed some real research studies that were published in peer-reviewed scientific journals? And indeed, I found something. There was a study with arthritis patients that was performed by Dr. McDougall. And after some time on the McDougall diet, the patients really got better. That's really amazing. But the thing with peer-reviewed research papers is that you need also to discuss the limitations of your study, which Dr. McDougall doesn't do in his book. And the limitations of the study were that there was no control group. So one can't actually say if it was a diet that was so beneficial for the people or something else. Also, Dr. McDougall mentions that it may have been placebo effect. Why people got better. Also, it is difficult to say if the people got better because of the great McDougall diet or just because they lost weight or they reduced their fat intake or because they cut out animal products. So we can't really say anything because we have no other diet to compare with. And actually, it may really have been that if people would have lost weight on any different diet that is kind of healthy, that cuts out all the junk food, so they would have seen the same beneficial effects. And this is probably the only point I agree on with Dr. McDougall, that the entire starch solution thing may have been just a placebo effect or the effect of cutting out junk food and eating a more healthier, less junky diet. If you liked this video, please share it with others. I would really appreciate it. The entire starch solution myth should finally die. People should know what the truth is. And if you have any other myth ideas I should debunk, just comment below and let me know. I would love to review the research literature and address these topics. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, please hit the subscription button down below and subscribe. It would be absolutely amazing. It would make me super happy. And see you very soon in the next video. Bye.